Hey, Shane. Hey. Don't be scared. I had like an eye surgery yesterday, so my face is like stuck. Oh, yeah. What happened? What surgery? I had like a sty that wouldn't go away, so they had to cut it out. Got it. All right. Yeah, let's get to it. Um, so can I ask, like, there were a lot of questions that I got stuck on. Like, how do I like show them to you? Do I just go back to the beginning on navigation? Mm -hmm. Okay, do you see my screen? Mm -hmm. So my thought process with this was I looked at the periodic table and I saw that it was a head. Mm -hmm. So then I assumed that it would be some sort of decay. Well, it says it. And then since there... Since they're right next to each other, I thought that it didn't have to undergo something severe, so I said gamma decay. Okay, so let's talk about the different types of decay. So what can you tell me about these different types of... Um, Alpha is the strongest and gamma is like the third one, so I assume that it required less energy. Um, in order to happen. Okay. And so, like, alpha takes priority, followed by beta, and then gamma. So that's kind of what I was going for. And then I was looking at the periodic table, and so that was just, like, an, a guess that I took. Okay. So tell me about, like, the particles, for instance. Um... So for these types of, so for radioactive decay, the different types of decay particles, um, oh, and I thought it would be a good idea. So like after our sessions, like instead of, cause usually it takes me like a really long time to like edit it and then upload it. I can just upload it like unlisted and like just send it to you and you can use it to like review if you want. Okay. So, so, okay. So gamma decay is just going to be like a gamma ray, which is a type of light. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I mean, usually you'd probably see like a symbol like a Y, but I just write it like this. And so we want to be aware of like what its mass is and its charge. And since it's light, it has a mass number of zero, which is where we put the mass number. And um, it'll and a charge number on the bottom will also be zero. And so that's for gamma. Positron is basically the same thing. If you um, if you just take an electron and you and you make it positively charged, um, and usually that's written as like a beta particle, but one that's positive. So like an electron, it'll have a mass of zero, but its charge will be plus one. And that is plus one plus one. Which one? Is alpha plus one plus one? Uh close. So alpha is the only one that has a mass, but it's the equivalent of a helium nucleus. So it'll have a mass of four and a charge of plus two. Four and plus two. Mm -hmm. Then beta decay, when they say just beta, like regular beta, not like beta positive or whatever, it is just the same thing as an electron. So it'll have a mass of zero and a charge. Oh, so what you drew before wasn't the beta, that was the positron? Yeah, it's weird because the 
you know, they could have, there could be beta plus, beta minus, but typically when they say just beta, they refer to the electron version. Mm -hmm. um, and so if they say positron, then uh, yeah, it'll be the beta positive. So mm -hmm. that's what each of these decay particles, you know, look like. And so when we do our reaction here, so we have like cesium, you know, 137. And, you know, we'll have to put in like the, the atomic number for that. But it would decay into barium 137 plus whatever that decay particle is. But would this be based off of like the periodic table trend? Like, would you look here at barium and? So uh, it won't be a trend per se, but we do need to look at that to know the atomic. No, I'm just saying that like it goes backwards. Oh, so it yeah. goes from like 137 to 132. Does that? So we're going to be looking at the atomic numbers. So like for cesium, it was 55. And for barium, it was 56. So, uh, and so that's, yep. Okay, so that's zero on top and then plus one in the bottom. So does that make it a positron emission? So on the bottom, like. Oh, but it's minus one because it's BA plus. Yep. Beta. There you go. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Um, mm -hmm. I just looked at like two plus. Yep. Yeah. And yep. since that means that the number of electrons would be less. Mm -hmm. So C. Good. Yep. Yeah, you could show me like the ones I think that you got stuck on. Well, Like this one, I didn't flag, but if I remember, I was confused about it because like, I don't know what calcium 44 is per se. So they're talking about, um, so, so what's like this number represent and what's this number represent? Isn't that mass number and, um, charge? Mm-hmm. Um, We're not charged. Could also be like, you know, a uh, number of protons. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and okay, now if we talk about isotopes, they're going to be, they must be the same element, which means they must have the same number of protons. So you're right there. But the mass number has changed, right? The number of protons stays the same for calcium. Yeah, for calcium. So you could go and look. Ba is twenty, and then. Well, yeah, yeah. And so uh, then it's the number of electrons that changes. So it is D. Well, so what what changes here? What does this forty four represent? Is it like the change of? So it's what that 40 represented? Plus four. Uh-huh. So uh so what did that 40 represent? That was the math. No, it wasn't. It was a mass, yeah. But that's not the mass of calcium. It's not 40, it's 20. Well, the periodic table is just some average of uh, abundance in nature. Okay. So but in this case, so, and, you know, there's different isotopes of all these things, right? Mm -hmm. So they're saying that calcium has, you know, several isotopes. Isotopes means that they're the same element. They just have different masses. Now, what inside of an atom has mass? The 
proton and neutron. All right. So if we have now, we used to have a mass the of proton and the neutron stay this. No, no, not. So, uh, so from 40 to 44, what, what, what's changing? From that four value, or the mass goes up. Mass goes up, right? Oh, so that means that it has to be either the proton or neutron that changes, and usually protons don't change. Well, yeah, yeah. If a, if a proton changes, it'll change the identity of the element. Mm -hmm. But, but yeah, if neutron could change, so it could be a. Yep, because electrons don't have mass. Right. Okay. And plus, that would also change the charge. Not that they're really giving us charge here, but, but yeah. I was taking my Casper and I had to tell them, I was like, hey, by the way, like, <laughs> I like put myself as visually impaired, but like temporarily because I had like a bandage over my eye. Yeah, no, I never, I, I don't know about that test very much. Like, it's it's a test that involves, you have to do, like, it face. Mm -hmm. There's, like, video responses and typed responses based off of, like, situations. And it's pretty much like an HR exam. Like, they just want to know how you handle, like, mm -hmm. certain scenarios that you find yourself in. Interesting. Okay, so, mm -hmm. I... <sighs> It's the different names, like oxide. I knew that was like OH something, right? So, so I was trying to calculate like how this would go, but I wanted to ask you. So what do we see in here? Electron configuration. I think this is for oxygen flat. Uh-huh. Yeah, and so, but uh, for oxide here, it's the ox there means the oxygen, right? Right. So, OH would be hydroxide, right? Because there's a... Isn't there HO2? And that's... Um, I mean, that'll be the same thing as OH. Oh. Right? That'll just be hydroxide. But, um, but yeah, when they say... Oxide is just a singular oxygen because usually it's an O2. Like in nature, it'll exist as an, as, as O2. Um, but if we are referring, if we say the word oxygen, we're just referring to like, you know, one. Oh. Oh. I mean, it could be, it's a bit, you know, it's pretty vague to say oxygen, but the key here is that they're just saying oxide ion. So it's just, well, it's pretty much what you, I think, expected um what you basically are saying right now which is uh that a would be oxygen flat and that there's something different about mm -hmm. oxide yeah so is it like an extra ion or like a loss of an like um like mm -hmm. would it be one of these then but then i don't know which direction yep so different. so what type of so, like, if you ever want to see, I guess, you know, uh, so, so atoms will want to change their electron configuration to be, like, the closest noble gas. Right, and it's close to the noble gas, so it would go upwards. When you say upwards? Like, it's one away, so it's in the six... Two? Sixth spot, right? Yeah. So it would go towards the noble gas. So, so, so like uh so if it goes towards the noble gas, is it losing electrons or gaining? Gaining. Yep. So that would but to get to the noble gas, it would be six. Uh or can it gain two or would it be five? And we're just looking for an increase. So it'll gain two, right? Yes. So. So gaining two would give us B. Yep. But how can it? So, okay. No matter where it is, like if let's say we were working with um, 
So with like something like sodium, sodium or with sodium, would it lose one? Yep. Okay. So whichever way is the fat like closest, that's how you can determine what type of uh, ion it'll make. All right. Hmm? Ionic radius. I couldn't tell with these because in my mind it was based off of a periodic table, but I also feel like the charges are important to notice here. So yeah, so they're talking so like yeah. So uh I mean, you know, it, it's good that you were thinking of the atomic radius trend, which goes, you know, down into the left. Um but an ionic radius is going to be a little different. So like if you imagine like, okay, the size of an atom is because the protons are pulling the electrons and they can only pull it so far, right? Um, imagine if you were to like remove an electron with the same it number. It's like a uh, valence. Uh huh, and okay, so, so it would get smaller overall because it wouldn't have that ring. Yeah, well, so so yeah. it'll get uh smaller, like because let's say it still has the ring, right? Like let's say that like if the outer shell has six electrons and then whatever, and now we have five on the outer shell, it could still have the ring. But if you think about it like this, like protons are trying to pull all these electrons, and they can pull it as far as it you know they can get. But if an electron leaves, they can pull, they have fewer things to pull in and they can pull it in closer. Mm -hmm. It's like if you're like lifting a weight or something and you, um, I don't know, you remove some some weight off, you can pull it closer to, to yourself. Okay. And so that's why, um, and then if electrons are added, and you know the number of protons stay the same the protons won't be able to pull the electrons in as closely because it has to spread out that pull force across you know a larger amount of electrons okay so what that means is compared to a regular atomic radius the cation which is when it's losing electrons will be smaller than the neutral atom and the anion which gains electrons oh, which yeah mean, you know the protons you know can't pull it in as closely will be larger right that makes sense so now as far as these go then we're looking for an anion mm -hmm. so then wouldn't N. Yep. Even though. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. I guess they're right next to each other. So between like O and N. Yeah. Because the thing is, if you actually looked at, did the thing with the periodic table, you would see that all of these actually have the same electron configuration because, you know, magnesium losing two would give you the same. Uh, thing basically like if you open up the table real quick so like mg2 plus oh open it mg so mg2 plus would be neon right uh o2 minus would be neon n3 minus would be neon right sodium plus would be neon got it okay so the charges are what's important here mm-hmm all right. So, okay. At first, I had no idea what IA meant, but then I saw that this one. Yeah, was, yeah. Oh, oops. So this is just going to be. Um, really annoying that these pop up. Hmm. Um, where's my tab? I'm confused. What just happened? 
Uh, so I don't know much about Max, but wouldn't it be down here? But like right here. It was no, those are um tabs that I had. Hmm. Like those are oh here I got it. Cool. All uh, right. Yeah. So this is just this is just a straight up periodic table question. So. Oh no no! It's just a straight up like content memorization type alkali metals mm -hmm. for with not am i correct um alkali metals react with the non-metals um well oh okay so i mean uh so if you think about like an alkali like something from group 1a or whatever like sodium or na or K, right? Uh, they can react with non-metals to produce soluble salts, right? Like NaC. So insoluble is the word. Yeah, yeah. So, but this is just this is just like a, a content thing. So, just remember that. So the answer is just going to be the uh, A that they can react form with hydroxides. The form hydroxides. Yeah. Is it because hydrogen is? Oh, just that. So like, uh, yeah, just when you add, like, have you ever, like, in, like, maybe, I don't know, chemistry in high school or whatever, or I don't know, like, I just remember, like, in high school, like, learning that if you drop, like, so like sodium sodium, like, solid sodium, not, like, salt sodium into water, it would, like, explode kind of no but yeah that's what it would do so like if you, you did like that. experiments where you like put a penny in certain chemicals and it changed to like gold and then silver so oh yeah that, that could sounds like maybe electroplating maybe or something yeah. so. but um but if you added this to h2o you would get like um something like this mm -hmm plus H2 gas and the H2 gas is like flammable and so yeah there's probably there's like tons of videos on YouTube about that but um but yeah the, that's just something that they do uh that's you... something that I need to go over oh just something to remember you don't need to go in depth on this the good thing about like this content like the con content diagnostic here is that it's like all high yield stuff so uh so yeah, once you once you get the stuff down, we should be seeing some good progress. But yeah, this is just a memorization thing. Okay. Second greatest is this. It says ionization energy again. I was going off of periodic table. Yep. So. Uh. So yeah, for the second ionization energy. Yeah, I was confused with second ionization. Yep. So yeah, you can open up that table. And so okay, so for instance, let's say with sodium, right? Um, its ionization energy would be the energy, you know, required to like remove its electron to make it have the same configuration as neon here. And mm -hmm. it wants to be at neon. So if you were to attempt to remove another electron from it to, to make it like fluorine, it does not want to be that. It does not want to be fluorine. So because they always want to reach like mm -hmm. the noble gas kind of yeah. configuration. So sodium here. So its first ionization energy is the energy it needs to uh, to turn into neon. The second ionization energy is the energy it takes to turn into fluorine. And it doesn't want to turn into fluorine. So it's going to have a very high ion second ionization energy. Uh -huh. Like if you just imagine like you, you take sodium, you remove an electron, and it's happy. It's at neon. And then if you 
try to remove another electron, it doesn't want to do that. So that you would need a lot of energy to remove that second electron. Got it. Mm -hmm. So now for magnesium here, to get to neon, first ionization energy, you remove an electron, it turns into sodium, electron configuration of sodium. And it wants to lose another electron to become neon. So you remove that second electron from here, second ionization, to turn into neon. And it wants to do that. It wants that second electron to be removed. So magnesium will have a lower second mm. ionization energy. So if you just think about it like that, like if you remove an electron and it, so if you move- if you But doesn't that make sense anyways, like to think about like magnesium versus neon, like it should have a lower, because magnesium is further away from the noble gas. Uh-huh. Yep. But then like out of the answer choices, like where are these two? O, I, and B. Isn't it the same position? Like, how do you decide between, like, magnesium and... Um, so, so, uh, so, okay. Between sodium and magnesium, which one has the higher... Magnesium. Second. So, for, like, um, so, th for the higher second, it would be the sodium, right? Because... After the first ionization, it turns into the neon. Oh, and then the second one is, okay, sorry, fine. So neon would be higher. So, but how do you know between, uh, sorry, sodium and uh, lithium? Uh, that's where you'll use the periodic trend of ionization energy going up uh, if you go up and to the right. Mm -hmm. So. So then sodium is the answer? So uh, ionization energy goes up this way right oh so lithium would end up being higher yep so where would it go from helium would it like not want to turn into hydrogen sorry once all right sorry uh, what was that? So for lithium, it would like want to go towards helium, but then it wouldn't want to get, uh, turn into hydrogen. Exactly. Okay. All right. So then lithium. Mm -hmm. I am pretty sure this is right. Yep. Okay. And then here's where the problem started. Mm. And this is yeah. pure calculation. Mm -hmm. So um, just charges, um, uh, sorry, mass, um, carbon is 12. So I did 12 times 12. Hydrogen stays the same at 22. So then I ended up doing 166 plus 176. Wait, um, what's that first? step that you did well i took like c12 h22 o11 and then the mass is 12 16 and 1 and i multiplied by the like the amount okay of in in it 12 times 12 12 is 144 22 times 1 and then 11 times 16 Okay, 144 plus... 22, and then I think it's 176. Okay, um, 160, that's 200. Well, it's not 160 because it's 11, but it will be in the 200. So that's how I got B. Mm -hmm. um, let me see here.
So yeah, I just made this like 10 times that. Mm -hmm. but 100 plus 100 would give us 200. 44 plus 60 would give us another 100. Right. So like 140, 160, right. 22. Yeah. 20. So that's like C. Yep. But so my strategy here was correct. I just rushed with my answers because I didn't want to calculate it out. Uh yeah, yeah. So so yeah. What 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 I would do is like with these numbers, like I'm not gonna add them like, you know, straight up. I'm just gonna do like in my head, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to take 100 from here, 100 from here to get 200. And I'm going to take 40 plus 60 to get another 100. Mm -hmm. You get 300 and then I'll add the 20. All right. Sounds good. I just wanted to know that like strategy wise, like I was doing the right thing. Yep. Yep. You were. But like, yeah, I can show you as we work together and stuff like certain like ways to do the math. Um mm -hmm. You know, Sounds good. Faster um, and accurately. But uh yep. So yep, this one. So first problem I had here is I have no idea what sodium azide is. Mm -hmm. So how did you but then yep. just looking at like the like numbers that I do know, I assumed that it was this. Exactly, yep. Okay, and then um I know that this is like a molar conversion, mm -hmm. moles to grams. So I did it out and I got C. Yep. I don't know where it is in my paper, but I know we've been over this so many times, but can we just like go over? I want to make sure that like I know what I'm doing with this and I'm not just like throwing values in. It's um mm -hmm. two um yeah I don't know can you can I just like watch you do it once and then I feel like I'm remembering how to do it but I just I wanted I, I just want to watch you do it one last time yeah sure so okay so they're giving us a balanced reaction which is nice and then they're saying if uh 2.25 moles of nitrogen gas are needed so this is the nitrogen gas and they're saying 2.25 moles in this new situation. Um, so that so so what can I do with that? Well, I know that nitrogen gas for every three moles of nitrogen gas, I have I will need uh two moles of the sodium azide. Mm -hmm. And so I can just make a proportion. Uh so I can make a proportion with um 2.25 moles of nitrogen gas and figure out how much it would be for how, mu how many moles of sodium azide I would need. So basically something like this. So like 2.25 moles of nitrogen gas for, you know, every, or, or I could just do multiplying it by for when you have three moles of nitrogen gas, you would have two moles of the azide, sodium azide. Mm -hmm. And then moles of nitrogen can be multiplied by each other. And so, uh, yeah, so I can multiply these out to get four point five over three which is going to be the moles of the and three yeah i can actually put in the last step in here too um so for one mole of sodium azide um so okay so since we want to event, we now want to turn it into uh mass. Let's open up the periodic table and figure and and see what the mass of this 
NA and 3 is? The mass of it. So you would, well, it's important to note that there's two of them, right? And uh, then. So in terms of the, yeah, okay. So... Sodium has 23. Mm -hmm. And what is the other one? N A and nitrogen is 14. Mm -hmm. So, and so there's so 14 times three mm -hmm. is 42. Mm -hmm. It's 42 plus 23, which is 65. So you see how, so we wrote out the 2.25 moles of N2, and then we use the, like, the mole proportion, uh, like, maybe I shouldn't say proportion, but we use the mole, um, we use the fact that for every two moles of sodium azide, we would have three moles of N2 gas, and the new situation is 2.25 moles. And so we just multiply that by this to get the number of moles of sodium azide. And then we'd multiply by the gram formula mass to figure out the mass of that sodium azide. So, so this could have also been done like this, like a simple proportion, like 2.25 for x let's say mm -hmm. equal to three over two right so then four point uh whatever it was four point five over um is equal to three x mm -hmm. okay. yep so that's the the basic idea here um and yeah, now in terms of yeah, that. honestly, when I got the sixty five grams, I was like, it can't be A or B, and then D seems like two. So, uh, uh okay, okay. So, so the sixty five grams would be, um, for one mole, right? Mm -hmm. and, and since it's times two. Mm -hmm. So we know that this three to two ratio, like, if you had one mole of sodium azide. That would be 65 grams. That would require, well, like, I guess, 1.5. 1. 1. Yeah, of that. But, but yeah, so, so yeah, that's how, you know, you can set it up. Sounds good. I just want to check that. Okay. Next. Okay, so frames of aluminum, I honestly. So well, okay, first of all, I wasn't sure which one was the molten iron, but I assumed it was um not this one. Oh wait, why not? Well, oh no, I did, I did use that. This is the one. Mm -hmm. I have it like written down, but my sheet paper is so scrambled now that. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So. And then aluminum, we have um. They're kind of balanced to each other, at least right now. Right. Because this is aluminum and this is the iron. And there's two of each. And then. Yep. So I converted 0 0.5 kilo, yeah, kilograms to grams. So, so similar to the previous problem, like what we're going to do. So maybe I could write it out like this. It's like mass you know, of 
iron. Use that to figure out moles of iron. And then use balanced equation or whatever to 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 figure out moles of aluminum mm -hmm. and then um, use molar mass of aluminum to figure out the mass of aluminum. 55.8. And then for aluminum, it's 27. So we have 55 grams per mole of the iron and um, I kind of combined the moles of iron part uh, in this. Mm -hmm. Now we would use the mole, you know, ratio and it's a two to two or one to one, you know, ratio. So same number of moles essentially, but I'm going to write it out anyway. So this is... um. I wrote to it. Wait. Oh, okay. Uh, zero point five. Might as well just write five hundred grams of iron. Then to the that's the that right there and then it's the 55 grams of iron in one mole of iron and then we use the balance equation part so for two moles so in this situation do you always assume that it's one mole because we don't know how many there are like even though there's like two of them we don't like use okay. two moles right here right You're asking about this yeah so this is just the molar mass. Okay, thing. all right. So so we would calculate this first, right? Like we could cross out 55 and because they're both multiples of five at the very least. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you can do it um, stepwise totally. Um, so, like how yeah. well. so basically, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, okay. So now it'll be for every two moles of iron, you'll get two moles of aluminum and then we just use the aluminum's molecular mass so that's it'll be another one mole but of aluminum and that uh what, what was that again i forgot aluminum was 27.0 20 i'll just write whatever 28 grams and then this would give us our grams of aluminum. So okay. you could totally do it step by step. Um, but here you can see it all kind of, you know, written out like that. Um and yeah. What do you get when you uh when you do this? Or like I guess how would you do the math? And mm, let's just call this 50 grams yeah. and then we can cross this whole thing out and just have it be um 10 would it be like yeah 10 because the gram 10 moles of fe um iron oh so, uh so are you saying so can you cross out like the grams completely uh sorry uh so you're saying uh so like the 55 and yes and tell me what you're saying about that i'm saying like if you take 50 and 50 away like you'll be left with 10 like this i i'm thinking back to i haven't taken math basically yes yeah, so you're left with 10 grams but i'm saying that because it's grams of iron grams of iron can't you cancel out the unit too and just be left with like 10 moles of iron Exactly, yeah, exactly. Okay. Yeah. That's why we set it up that way, yeah. Uh -huh. All right, okay.
So then you have 10 moles of iron times 2 moles of aluminum over 2 moles of iron. You, again, can cross it out. So it's 5, Yeah. mol uh, five moles of aluminum. And then 5 moles of aluminum um, times 28 over 1. And then you're left with, like, 110, basically, 120. So, uh, let's see. So maybe I should have done, because it's the two to two, like two over two is same as one. So maybe I could have made the math simpler by just making this a one here. Or if we leave the two, you can take, you can do this. You could say, okay, two goes into 28. Wait, but what's, oh, how the two goes, but I thought we canceled out the irons here. What, I already crossed it out, like here, it became one mole because I multiplied it by the 10, and so then the 10 became five moles. Oh, so, so, okay, so let's, I, I need to go backwards. so let's <laughs> make this just I rushed. one, one, uh, here. Um, because two to two over two would be the same as one over one. Yes. So this can just be now what? Now one. Okay, fine. So 10 moles of aluminum times 28 grams. So that's 280 grams of aluminum. And since we rounded up, or, or, yeah, since I think we it's somewhere like 270, it would be, or I guess 240. Mm -hmm. But does the, oh no, yeah, we changed it to grams. Yeah, yeah. So. That's what I was really confused about. And Oh, this I don't one. know, do you have time? Do is 3.30 a hard stop? Um. We could do we could do this. Yeah, I have someone at three forty five, but we can do. Okay, all right. So I Yeah. was really confused with like, I know how to do balanced equations, but that like the energy part I was confused about because it didn't know what like to <laughs> balance there. And so I tried doing it like under the assumption that like there just wasn't there and how to balance that. But I don't think that you can do that. Mm hmm. So can we work through this together, please? Yeah, of course. So, um, let's see. Okay, so one, six, six. So tell me how you got that last number. The one. Mm -hmm. It's because I didn't know how to do it <laughs> at all. I No. was really confused with the like one six six one Yeah. Uh-huh. meant because there would be more. Oh, oh, so is it like six H O and then energy? So I think that's how I got it because these values are all there and then energy I wasn't aware of what it would be so I thought the best thing to do is to be put it with one Uh -huh. So, energy. yeah, so if you had one mole of the glucose here, uh, we'd have six. So we, 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 uh, so we want six carbons on, you know, the other side. Um, and on the left side for the oxygens, we have three. six. Oh, on the left, six. And and then two more with eight. Okay. And then 12 uh, hydrogens.
Uh, let's see. All right, I guess I'll do that. And then um, full of hydrogens. And then on the right side, we would need to put a six here to get six carbons. And that also means that this is 12 uh, yeah. oxygens. So we need to adjust this. If there are immediately three oxygens, though, wouldn't it be more? Wouldn't it be times three? Um, so we'll so since we already have now um 12 oxygens on the right. It's we, 15. We wanna, no, it's we wanna 13. Fix this one on the left here. Okay, all right. So on the left here. If we had it as six, then this turns will turn into six oxygen. Let's see, six times two, so twelve plus the six from here would be eighteen. And so we want the oxygens on the right to be eighteen. So far we have twelve. But that means that we can turn this into the hydrogen has to be changed as well. Because we need six more, right? But we're gonna need oh yes. Mm -hmm. And then six eight times the two H's would get give us the twelve H's. Yes. And that should then be valid. I don't think I understand how you got the beef part though. Uh, because why is it? S oh, oh, I see. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I understand. So you do ignore the energy? Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds good. Yep. Um, Do I keep working forward with this and then? So you, yeah, so uh, yeah, you could, you could. Like, I think if you just, like leave out of it and stuff, yeah, it'll save your. No, I'm not gonna go out of it. I'm gonna keep working forward. I'm saying like keep going through. I I shouldn't start like and so I should finish this one. I'm uh, just yeah. I get stuck on almost every single problem, so it's really been taking me like uh -huh. a long time to finish this. Yep, that's okay. That's okay. Um, but yeah, we're moving in the right direction. You're learning all this stuff. You're doing a good job. And uh, yeah, it's all high yield stuff, so it's definitely gonna help. So, uh, but yeah, it, and it's okay, you know, if if you're getting stuck on it, because that means that we found something to, like, work on. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So just yeah, all right. keep it Sounds up. Good. And, okay. uh, we don't have a lesson for tomorrow. Our next one's on Friday, right? Uh, correct. But I could be like I could fit you in for tomorrow okay. um if you have time love to yeah yeah i'll i'll see if i can move a different student but uh mm -hmm. if i can do that it'll be at some time between like between like 2 30 and like 5 30 totally so. fine i'm home all day so all right awesome so yeah you're doing a great job keep up good work all right, all right thank you